Hello YouTube and welcome back to the second episode of the Manrodi build. We're going through through the whole color modulation process of all the armor pieces this time. So yeah, let's get right into this. This is this is going to be lengthy. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a whole lot less of this guy right here and instead a little bit more of this guy right here. All right, we gotta start off with the uh, the shadow color. It's called uh, Dunkelgrau Shadow with this AK set. Um, this is actually the only color I'm going to paint uh, in a upside down way, kind of like uh, where I only want to hit the really shadow parts of of the pieces. Okay, so the next color is going to be um, the dark base color, which we're going to use to um, fade our shadow really nice. Um, this in this particular set, it's a, a very bluish kind of hue, uh, which is really nice because you get this uh, shadow transition where the color in the shadows normally when you go outside and, and watch. Uh, what what happens with when lights or when with shadows is that in the shadows uh, most colors get much more desatur or get desaturated, and um, so in this case um, you get a really nice transition from the desaturated color uh, to this bluish hue, which gives the the shadow areas a very natural look, a very dynamic look. And I really like this, or I really like the set for, for this huge shift. So we here, here have we our back skirt. Kind of want to use this as an example piece, which. Uh, I'm gonna slow down the video with every color for this one. Uh, as you can see, I'm pretty much covering most of the pieces right now with this color, especially all the uh, outwards uh, facing areas um, are going to be not in the shadows, kind of like if this makes sense. So this is the chest piece, another good example. And this is actually, this is going to be a, a lighter piece later because uh, I kind of want to direct the eye into, into the center first of the model so uh, kind of chest piece and the head are going to be a little bit lighter than the rest so just so your eye has a better way to adjust or, or kind of like navigate better on the model when it's finished.
Okay, so next up is the base or the dunkelgrau base, um, which is kind of like our mid-tone. And I think, or in, in my perception, I think uh, the the base color or the mid-tone should be your color uh, on surfaces that have a kind of like a 90 degree angle. So, um, so all the surfaces that are pointing downwards more than 90 degrees or uh, pointing more downwards than uh, sidewards should be uh, darker and vice versa. Uh, here, here you can see the back skirt again. So I'm pretty much covering half of the piece in the base color right now. You can see it here right now. And you can also see this really nice transition from, from the desaturated shadow color to the bluish um, dark base color and now into the warmer uh, mid-tone again. I think it's a, it's a good rule of thumb for your for your base color for your mid tone to to be covering 50% um, of of the piece because um, since we only used five out of the six colors uh, included in the set um, our mid tone is really in the middle it's 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 uh, step three out of five so yeah this is kind of like if you would paint this model all in one color you would only use this 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 shade so if you if you wouldn't or if you don't do a gradient on your piece um, this would pretty much uh, the color you would use for Yeah, you see the the chest piece or uh, the upper body piece uh, kind of fucked that up there. There's a little splash of paint on there, but I don't worry about it because um, we're going to to chip and weather this pretty hard. So uh, this this will just disappear on the finished model. You will never able you will never able to to see this. So. Yeah, and this is the the front piece where the uh, the front skirts are attached, and you can see I, I I actually switched it or I flipped it there because it's a such pronounced piece. I thought it it would look cool if I just uh, lighten this up on the on the tip there. So these are our leg pieces and I like the, this kneecap thing there. Um, I, I want this kind of like more, to be more pronounced to, to really show out. Kind of like the same thing with the with the elbow caps. I really throw a lot of uh, lighter paint there. So this is what it looks like now. I really like this. 
this is a really I'm, I think these these pieces got uh, got pretty lucky. Uh, it's a really smooth uh, transition from from dark to light there, so this is going to be really nice. So now we we get or we got to the, to now we got to the highlighting. Um, I feel kind of like at this point I, I I a little bit I've overdone it a little bit. Uh, I think I am going to try to tone it down with the filter later on because uh, in some areas I, I just feel that I got a little bit too light. Um, the transition is still still smooth enough, I, I feel, but um, oh, okay, kind of bumped into into the booth here. Um, I feel the the transition is still uh, smooth enough, but at some points, or it's just uh, I, I just got too much area with the highlight color. And as you see here, I really try to to get like only small spots um, with the with the lightest color, just to make just to make make it pop more, just to to have this really high contrast later on. As I said, the, the head can be much lighter than the rest. It's, it's, it, it won't look strange. Um, it actually helps helps the viewer um, to, to navigate on the model. I think it's a good way to, to direct the, the viewer's eyes. Alright, so these are our finished pieces. Uh, next step will be um, the chipping. I really like to do the chipping before before I do the the, the gloss varnish because um, since I'm using the acrylic colors, you won't get a better surface to to hand paint than this. Like the airbrush, um, the airbrush paint now is, is kind of like it's a really rough uh, surface so your your paintwork will stick very nicely to it so this is the reason why I, I'm doing uh, I will do the the chipping before I actually cover the piece with uh, the gloss varnish and add the the other the other layers of weathering to it all right that's the end of episode two. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed watching um, and if you did, I would love you guys to subscribe. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing these kind of videos um, and I'm always grateful for all your feedback down here in the comments. Please tell me what you liked, what you didn't and tune in next time when I paint a robot. Probably.